You're listening to Journey for Truth with internationally known medium, Tai Yi practitioner, and radio host, Tammy Urbanic. Hello and welcome to Journey for Truth on iHeartRadio and YouTube. I'm Tammy Urbanic. Thank you so much for joining me. Journey for Truth Radio is always on demand and with many new episodes. On my website, empowermentthroughhealing.org, you'll see a life energy flow Tai treatment titled Internal Conflict. This is for anyone who is having health difficulties within the torso region, including cancer. This can assist a person in releasing the toxicity from the disease and also add to any other assistance one might be receiving through conventional medicine or alternative medicine. Also on the website, jonalifeinstitute.com, you will see a new Jonah message titled Toxic. This talks about our toxic water, toxic air, but also toxic relationships in a toxic home and or work environment and what you can do about it. There's great information on that message that you can download straight to your computer or, or order through a CD, jonalifeinstitute.com. My guest this week is Sally Hope. Sally spent her young adult years traveling and playing with the band, coming to know other musicians such as Tommy Lee and Bon Jovi. She chose to leave professional music to pursue her passion in life coaching. And I'm really excited to talk with her today about uh, her coaching work and just her great adventure. Sally, welcome. (laughs) Hi, thank you so much for having me. It's great to be here. It's great having you on the show. First, how did you come to the point of opening for Bon Jovi within the music? Oh gosh, okay, so um, I my music career really was a series of very lucky happenings. I had decided um, maybe a few years before that I wanted to be in a band, then I made a series of decisions of like the kind of experience I wanted to have, and long story short, I was playing in a band in Santa Barbara and another band found me and I transitioned into a new band. And when I got to LA to play with that new band, um, we had these really big uh, goals and we said things like, we want to play with Aerosmith. We want to play with Bon Jovi. You know, we named these really big aspirations for ourselves. And I had only been in the band, I think for two months by the time that we um, opened up for Bon Jovi. So it was one of those, um, local Los Angeles radio station, um, contests and we won it. And so that's how we ended up on stage with Bon Jovi. (laughs) Wow. That must've been so exciting. It was. Did uh, playing music and being in the music industry industry become dissatisfying? Um, Yeah, it was one of those things where I didn't really set out to, it wasn't like my lifelong dream to be a musician. I had always thought I would be on stage. I remember thinking that and feeling that when I was very young, but um, being in a band and being a musician came to me later in life. Um, I'm an introvert and I'm a homebody. So the lifestyle of uh, being in a band was really hard for me. A lot of traveling, a lot of energy going out, um, a lot of late nights. And, um, you know, ultimately I knew I wanted to have an impact on people and I just wasn't convinced that music was the only way to do that. Um, So as I was like at the end of my 20s, you know, Mm -hmm. I wasn't really into like drinking anymore that much, you know, (laughs) Um, it was less appealing, the lifestyle of it. And so I transitioned um, around that time. I can certainly understand that. You know, once I was at the uh, latter part of my 20s, I wasn't into the, the partying scene anymore, into the going to clubs and dancing till 11 12 o'clock at night, you know, I I became to the point where, you know, it's nine o'clock and I want to get in my pajamas (laughs) and (laughs) watch something on TV. And, and I, myself, I'm, I'm a homebody. I like, I like to travel. I like to have my adventures, but I always like to go home and then be in my own environment and not have all this loud stuff going on around me. So that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Yeah. That's how it was for me too. Like I really enjoyed the times I did have and it was amazing and an experience that that I will treasure forever. But at the end of the day now, you know, I don't want to be going on stage at 1130 or midnight. I want to be like well asleep by then. Exactly. <laughs> I sound so boring now, but you know, that's just how it is for me. <laughs> yes. 
how, what led you to shift your focus into coaching? I read on your website that uh, Tommy Lee actually suggested that mm-hmm. you become a life coach. So what led up even to his suggestion? Um, I had been in the music industry probably, I don't know, maybe six or so years by that point. And I was starting to feel itchy and a little bit like I I wasn't sure what I wanted to do next. And then my singer quit the band and then it was like I had no choice. I had to figure out what to do next. Um, I felt increasingly throughout my time in the band that one of my favorite parts about it was that I had access to people who wanted to live their dreams. Mm -hmm. So people would come to shows and they'd look up on that stage and they'd be like, wow, I've always wanted to do that. I've always wanted to play music or I've always wanted to be in a girl band or be a girl in a band or something like that. And those people would come up to me after the show and they would talk to me and tell me their dreams and they would ask me how I got the confidence to be up there and how, you know, it works and how do I do it? And it became my biggest joy in my life and in the band to talk to these people, to talk to these girls and women about this. So I, while I was still in the band, I created a website that was basically like confidence tips and music gear tips and makeup tips and just everything that like in, was involved in my life in the band at that time. And that became the thing I loved the most. And so when I was transitioning out of the music part, I didn't even know that life coaching was a thing. Like I'd never even heard of it. But I remember one day I was really bummed because my band had just broken up and I didn't know what I wanted to do. And I'd gone over to Tommy's at that, that day. And I was just like, I don't know what to do. You know, I, I don't ha- I, you know, I have a bachelor's, but I don't have a, any further degrees and I don't want to be a therapist, but I know I like to help people. Mm-hmm. And he said, you know, you should, check out life coaching. I've had a life coach since 1996 and he's been amazing. And I think that you would be great at it. So he gave me the number of his coach and I called that guy up and basically just picked his brain. And I said, what is the deal with this, you know, life coaching thing? I've never even heard of it. And so pretty much started there. I just became very, very curious about it and then kept, kept following the crumbs until I got into my own program. So you, simply was it as simple as you left the music industry you picked up all of your things and you moved and started your business um yes and no like it's never that simple with me you know it takes a lot of time I'm a I'm a like I'm a thinker and I feel something in my heart but then I like have to keep on following the sparks of inspiration so Mm -hmm. I I didn't just simply hear that go to school and bail. I heard that. I checked it out. I researched. I also applied to grad school at that time for therapy because I was like, well, you know, this is a good thing, you know, solid job, et cetera, et cetera. So I spent probably that whole year taking the GREs, writing my letters of recommendation and doing that whole rigmarole for grad school. Um, while at the same time checking out life coaching and life coaching schools. And then Um, I got accepted into my top choice grad school. And then when I said yes to that, because I thought it was the more solid thing, Mm -hmm. I felt sick to my stomach, like literally nauseous. And I didn't want to do it. I wanted to do this other thing called life coaching. So it was at that point that I made the choice. I picked up, I moved to the Bay Area where the headquarters were and um, started my coaching program. That program took about a year or so, um, while being a student and being in school. And then after that year is when I started my, my own business. Wow. That is awesome. Now you also took adventures in an RV and you moved to Costa Rica (laughs) and you, you, what I read within your adventures is that you show a lot of courage and you live within a lot of courage. This is, um, this is wonderful. And it's wonderful for people to hear that they also have courage within themselves that they can tap into and they can make these changes. Was it scary for you to do those things? Every step along the way. Yeah. Um, courage is one of those things that I think there's a misconception that, that people who have courage are, are fearless. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't think that's the truth. I don't think fearlessness exists. What I think it is, is you're just willing to be, um, uncomfortable in 
service of something that you really want to try or something you really want to do. But it was every single step of that was really scary. And I'm a very sensitive person. So I cry a lot. <laughs> you know, there was a lot of tears and a lot of like, Oh, my gosh, is this the right thing to do? And am I crazy? Like, I've never even been in an RV, let alone driven one by myself, you know, or um, I don't, I don't know if I can do this. Or this is this, why, why do I have this harebrained idea? I wish I didn't, you know, but, um, the desire for it was always stronger than the fear of it. Mm -hmm. And I, I think courage is a practice. You can practice it and you get better at it. Um, because I was, I was not born an adventurous person. I was always a kind of play it safe person and then I had to keep doing these things that were pretty courageous and pretty brave and different and out of the box. And um, the more you do it, the more you can do. Um, but still, even now, I, you know, I just, <laughs> I, everything I do now is still scary, you know, and it still takes courage. And um, it's all been so worth it. Absolutely. I, I completely understand. I was a school teacher. I worked in middle school and high school. It was a very secure job and I enjoyed it. I was very passionate about teaching. I won a couple of awards and because I had dual certificates, I was pretty marketable in terms of where I might want to go in teaching if I wanted to change districts or schools. But I decided to leave that so-called security and, and become my own boss and become self-employed with empowerment through healings, what it's called now. And it does take a lot of courage because you don't know the outcome. There's a lot of the what ifs. There's a lot of self-doubt. There's a lot of, but what if I can't pay my rent or I can't pay my bills or what? And there's always a backup. You know, when I think when we think about it, we can always say, well, if, if it's not picking up the way we want, then I have an alternative. I can look for something different in the interim or I can get something that supplements or do something that supplements. But having that courage and that drive and that passion and knowing that deep sense of knowing that you're on the right path for you personally, I think is what can really help people move past that fear and, and really be in their courage. So yeah, and sometimes even if you don't know, you know, I think there were a lot of moments where I was on the um, on the ledge where I could stay where I was or I could do something really different that was really, really scary. And I don't think I always knew that it was the right thing. I just felt like it was something I had to do. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that that more than more than any of it really pushed me over the edge. I'm like, well, you know, I'm going to I guess I'm going to do this thing. And it's still scary. <laughs> Absolutely. And I think it comes down to enjoying your life and being yes. willing to be on an adventure and not get so caught up in the money behind it. You know, the, the what if, if I go starving or I'm destitute, you know, the, the, where our mind goes is, is major extremes and just really going with our own personal knowingness. Now, what yes. is renegade coaching? So, um, I do my own style of coaching. So I was trained at CTI, but I've always taken a very um, honest, very kind of spiritual approach to coaching. So when I say renegade, I'm a renegade life coach, that's partially that that's who I, that's what I identify with as myself, as a renegade in the sense of, you know, I am willing to take those risks. I am willing to um, do what I feel is right and follow the crumbs of curiosity to lead my life. Uh, be out of the box a little bit. To me, that's a renegade. Um, and then the coaching style itself is born from that part of me. So the coaching style is traditional coaching with also a lot of my own intuition, my own experiences, and my own um, kind of consulting from the years I've been in business and the years that I've worked with thousands and thousands of um, business owners, not just through my own coaching practice, but through mm -hmm. being involved with B-School. Marie Forleo's business school called B School. I think that's a wonderful way to to coach people is through. Yes, you can you can take your academic learning, of course, and then you insert your own spiritual awareness, your own knowingness, your own experience. Most of all, because you've gone through 
many steps that you might teach people to go through. So you know how the steps work, you know what makes those steps work, and you know how to coach people in that direction. I think Absolutely. the most ineffective type of coaching is when the coach has not actually taken those steps himself or herself. They're just kind of going from a book. And, and there's not that real experience there. So, you know, how do you know if those steps work? So that, that is awesome. And uh, I really applaud you for assisting so many people because there are just a lot of people who are seeking assistance, who are seeking awareness, who really want to change their patterns. And they need people who have done that or are doing that in, in a very effective and beneficial way to kind of show them the light and show them the pathway. Thank you. So in continuing to talk about courage, how do you assist people to express their own courage? Well, first, I, I think the most important part about our dreams and about the life that we want is being able to voice it and see it and actually make a commitment to it. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a lot of times when we think that we want something and people say, you know, oh my gosh, I've been trying to do my business or I've been trying to write my book for a thousand years and it's not happening. Well, how committed are you to it? Because without commitment, nothing can happen. Exactly. So, yeah. So, um, and then you're always kind of like trying to do something, but you're never actually producing anything. Right. So what I really, my, I have the gift of clarity. So one of my biggest things that comes really natural natural to me is to be able to see for somebody else what they're saying and what they're feeling and what they're not saying. So it's um, the process for me is to kind of just talk to people to see, to get them to their own clarity and then get them to commit. And if they don't want to commit, that's okay. There's nothing I can do at that point really. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, coaching first with clarity and then commitment and then then the action steps are kind of the easiest part once you're committed you know it's just one foot in front of the other exactly so when you say clarity what you are stating is that you help people pull away the layers or to kind of get a little deeper in perhaps their intent where they're coming from maybe a hidden fear uh, maybe something they're avoiding looking at is that what you mean absolutely yeah, it's all of those things that, you know, I'm not the coach that you can, um, I was going to say lie to, but like that you can kind of uh, slip those little things by, you know, I, I'll hear it in your voice, I'll see it in my mind for you. So um, yes, it's, it's peeling back the layers, it's getting to the root, it's... Um, you know, shining the light on whatever metaphor you want to use, but really it's, it's truth. It's uncovering truth. That is, I love it. It is awesome. <laughs> I love it because there are many times where people, they, they think they have a certain intent. They have convinced themselves they have a certain intent, but that's not accurate. And there are certain layers that need to be pulled away, certain false beliefs that need to be examined. Yes. Um, and then especially when people realize that they've taken on a false belief from their mother, from their father, from someone else in the family, or even a friend, and they think it's their belief, and then through the help of you and others, they start to understand that it's it's so fake, it's so inaccurate, and, and can simply start being peeled away. Yeah. And only from that place can you make a decision for yourself that is in alignment with what you actually really want. Yes. Um, so when you're not, you know, acting on limiting beliefs or when you're not acting on things that are false for you, but you think are true for you, um, only when you're not doing those things can you actually create the thing that you want to create. Because, you know, I... I've seen it meant I've seen it time and time again where someone's like, I really want this thing, but they keep not doing it. You yeah. know, there's a reason why you're not doing it. And I've found that there's usually only only um, two or three reasons why people don't do things they say they want to do. So, you know, I've seen this over and over and over again. So it's really easy for me to kind of pinpoint which category they might be in and then help from that place. Excellent. Now, how do you use astrology to assist yourself and others? 
Oh, myself, I'm like a total astrology lover. I remember being six years old, my grandma showing me Laura Goodman, um, the Sun Signs book. And ever since then, I've been a diehard like Scorpio reader upper. <laughs> and, um, you know, I, I've gotten more into it with doing the other aspects of my chart. Um, you know, for my clients, I don't, I don't call myself an astrologist at all because I don't have any formal training or even informal training. I just do it because I love it. Mm -hmm. But what I do is I, I pay attention to it. You know, I think that numerology, astrology, things like that really, really matter. And they can inform me as a coach as to aspects, um, that might be there for somebody. So I never assume like, Oh, well you're a Pisces. So that's why, you know, it, right. it, it's not like that for me, but I use it to inform myself, um, to get a more complete picture of who a person might be. Wow. Excellent. And just a really good addition to coaching yet yeah, another aspect to coaching that, um, that many, uh, many coaches don't offer. Mm hmm. Now, through all of your adventures, um, you know, Costa Rica, driving the RV, I think you ride a motorcycle. Yes. So through all of your different adventures, and now you moved to a completely different state. You were in California in your different state now. What have you learned about yourself that you have found most valuable? Oh, that's such a great question, huh? Well, one thing I know is I'm very resourceful. Almost everything I've ever done has not been done by anybody I knew personally before. So I've had to figure out how to learn how to be the person that I am. You know, nobody in my family rides motorcycles. It's, it's the opposite of that. <laughs> you know, nobody I knew lived in Montana. Nobody I knew was a coach or had a, their own business. Um, nobody I knew drove an RV. Nobody, you know, so I think nobody I knew was in a band or played music. So, mm -hmm. um, when you're in that place where you don't have the resources readily available to you, you have to figure it out on your own. You have to reach out to people. You have to ask, you have to be like, Oh, I see you walking with a helmet. Do you ride a motorcycle? Can I ride with you? Can you tell me how to do this thing? <laughs> you know? And that has happened to me many, many, many times in my adventures. So I think resourcefulness is one. Um, also, I think I've learned um, how to make friends and how to um, be, um, as an introverted person, how to still be social and how to still find a community for myself no matter where I go. Um, that has proved to be invaluable because since I do move, tend to move around a lot, I'm around new people all the time. So how do I find a sense of community and home if I'm like here and there and everywhere? Mm -hmm. Wow, that's, that's awesome. Do you find it difficult for many people to learn how to love themselves? Um, I think that's maybe one of the number one things we all go through. Yes, absolutely. I think that even if you think you love yourself, there's layers of it where you don't even maybe realize that you're not or that you feel unworthy or um, unlovable in some way. So yes, I think that we all struggle with that. Why do you think, or, you know, in the work that you've done in the experience that you've had with different clients, have you seen a common theme within people as to their denial of self-love, even though many times it's not a conscious denial, but still a denial of self-love? Yeah, I think the first thing that comes to my mind, and I'm sure there's many, but um, I think that people don't think they can have or deserve or it's possible to have what they truly want. And so they get into these situations where they're, um, you know, relationships that aren't right for them or careers that feel unfulfilling to them because they don't believe that they're worthy of having the thing that they really, really want. And so that's where you see people settle or people feel unsatisfied. Um, yeah. And what do you encourage them to do? Like, do you, uh, is there an example Obviously, you know, don't go through the whole book of everything you encourage them to do. But do you have an example of what you ask them to look at when they are struggling with self-love? Well, I think it kind of goes back to what we talked about. My coaching style is in the first place. I think without awareness of what's actually happening for you, nothing can change. Mm -hmm. So I do a lot of work with patterns and habits. 
Mm. What are the things in our lives that have been consistent for a long period of time? What, um, what behaviors do we keep doing? What results do we keep having that are not what we want to have? And then see the commonalities there and see where our, in the moments where our behaviors happen in those moments so that we can then switch that. But it first has to be, um, it has to be somebody who's willing to look at themselves honestly and under a microscope where you say, oh yeah, actually like I do text my ex when I feel lonely, you know, as a form of distraction for feeling lonely or yeah, you know, I kind of do drink maybe a little too much when I feel like too overwhelmed with my life or, you know, and so really I feel like personal growth and self love is about being willing to have courage to look at yourself honestly and decide from that place, okay, like what do I want to continue and what needs to change? Exactly. Looking at patterns is so important. Whenever I'm going through a difficult time, I'll go to my journals and I'll look at my patterns. <laughs> I'll, I mean, I'm looking for that commonality in thoughts, in perceptions, in actions. And through that awareness, as you were stating, then you can begin making different choices. You choose to think a different way. You choose to perceive a different way. And you're taking different actions. Actions to, is so important, a really important part of that because yeah. there's only so much looking you can do if right. you don't actually change the root pattern. And then that goes back to the roots like we talked about before. Yeah, then nothing can change if you don't, if you don't change actual take, actually take action. Right. And everything occurs in patterns. So when you know what pattern you're working with, then like you're stating, you can take that different action and really create that change. What is the most important message you would like to leave the listeners with in regards to really living your life and living in courage? Um, don't be afraid of your own truth. So don't be afraid of the things that you want. Um, every desire and want is valid, even if your family thinks it's weird or your um, community doesn't support it or might not, it's valid for you. Um, the other bit of advice as far as courage goes, or as far as living that, that life of fulfillment is follow the things that you're curious about. You might not know the end answer or result. Mm -hmm. But if you follow things that are interesting to you, that you're sparked about, that you find yourself Googling at night over, those are all steps along the way of your journey to that thing that you truly want. So don't be afraid if you don't know the answers right now and if you don't know exactly where you want to end up. I think that's part of the adventure, not knowing all the answers. You know, we, we get to figure <laughs> out the answers. We get to do that journey. In my opinion, I know there's a lot of people who just, you know, they want all the answers right oh, now. Yeah. Just tell me everything right now. Totally. Most and, people who come to you want the answers right now and they're frustrated because they don't have them and they want to know how it's all going to go and that it's not going to be painful. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. And that really kind of takes away from the journey. And, and as well as if I had all of the answers, I would be so overwhelmed. What do you do with all of that information? Because then you have to put into action and each action is one step at a time. And then it just becomes overwhelming if you have everything at once because you can't do, you can't put into action everything all at once because it's a step-by-step -step process. I well, think and I think that's why actually people find themselves, and I'm doing air quotes here for the ones that can't see me, um, confused. People yeah. actually know the answers. I think we, I think we do 99.99% .99 of the time know all of the answers to all of the questions we have, but that's really overwhelming because it means we have to take action. It means we have to do something that we perceive might be uncomfortable or painful. Right. And instead of doing that, we'd rather just stay in this, oh, I'm so confused place so we don't have to actually do anything that might be painful. So I actually think we know the answers, but that's a whole other conversation, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> that is uh, very, very accurate. Now, where can people find your information and your website? You can find me at sallyhope.com. So it's S-A-L-L-Y-H-O-P-E.com. Excellent. Well, thank you so much, Sally, for being a guest on my show this week. 
Thank you for having me, Tammy. And thank you, listeners, for joining me here as well on Journey for Truth on iHeartRadio and YouTube. Until next time, have a fantastic week.